in West Philadelphia, born and raised in the playground where I spend most of my day. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to The Passenger Seat. This is your host, Carlos. And, and Joseph. Yeah, oh, you're going to say go. for me? Oh, yeah, okay, I was yeah. going to. I was going to help you a little bit. Yeah, if you hadn't noticed, today we're going to be talking about, <laughs> maybe you might have guessed it, 90s uh, TV shows. Yeah, right? although a lot of people, uh, at least a lot of people that I know, would kind of confuse uh, French Prince with 80s. Really? Yeah, huh. it's weird. It's from the 90s, guys. Uh, so 90s TV shows, live action. We're not going to say sitcoms, because... Uh, there's maybe, what, one show on here that's they're, not a sitcom? Yeah, they're not all sitcoms. We're just going to talk about popular 90s shows, and right. the shows that meant most to us as well. Right. Um, also, we're not going to do them all. There's a couple that most of you are going to say, hey, uh, you know, where's this, where's that, where's well, the other one? There's a lot of 90s shows. There's a lot. <laughs> um, don't worry about it. We're, we are going to make um, another video where we are going to talk about the ones we missed. Um, and trust me, we want to talk about them. So, um, we're going to do it in a similar fashion as what we did with the uh, animes, where we'll uh, talk a little bit about them, give a little... We'll uh, jump into some facts and things like that. Yeah, some facts and uh, even some fun facts and history on the show. Um, so, the first one. Now, if you guys don't recognize that theme... We're talking about the X Files. Um, so the X Files. Uh, it started back in September tenth of nineteen ninety three. Chris Carter was the creator, and um, the series is basically these two FBI agents, yeah. Fox Mulder and uh, Dana. What's her name? Dana Scully. Scully. Yeah. yeah. So it's Mulder and Scully, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and basically they're uh, investigating the X Files, which are these. Um, Sort of marginalized, unsolved, like supernatural uh, cases. Cases, right? Yeah. With um, paranormal mm -hmm. phenomena. Sort of like the Men in Black, but no. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. Um, and yeah, you so you see like aliens and and you know and, and you know. Ever had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do other. I, I don't remember Weird seeing stuff in that show. Some episodes pop up, but I don't. I don't remember seeing the whole show. Right for me, um, the X Files. I don't really remember it too much. I remember uh, one of my uh, brothers used to watch the X Files, and mm -hmm. I sort of used to, you know, be like in the back, like, "Oh, what's this show? What's going yeah, on here?" You yeah, know? I know. I, I used to flip through channels, and I'll be like, oh, "I'm just gonna." Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so a couple of fun facts uh, from the X Files. So they, they originally thought uh, that the show was going to bomb, that it wasn't going to be good. Interesting. And boy, were they wrong. <laughs> because yeah. The X-Files is, is big. You yeah. Know? It's, it's very popular. Popular shows in the 90s. Right. The theme song, you know, the one we were doing earlier, mm -hmm. is actually uh, an accident. Because uh, the composer, Mark Snow, mm -hmm. he accidentally laid his arms on the keyboard and he turned on the delay effect. And he sort of used that and, and made the really? song. Really? Yeah. Pretty that's interesting. actually interesting. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's pretty much all we have to talk about the X Files. Since we're again, we're not we're not really yeah we're not really too fond on the X Files. So I guess we can move along from here. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ, computer, calm down. <laughs> all right. So the next show <laughs> that we're gonna talk about is hanging out. Oh man, I forgot the rest of the lyrics. Down the street, same old thing. Uh, sing. We did it last week. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be talking about <laughs> that '70s show. And yes, it says that '70s show it did premiere in the '90s, 1998 to be specific. And I know a lot of you '90 kids remember remember this show because you know you grew it. You were too young to watch it when it came out, but bet you in the early 2000s you were watching every almost every episode. Right. Right. Yeah, who doesn't forget uh, Eric Kelso, Hyde, uh, Jackie, mm -hmm. uh, what was her name? Donna. Donna. Yeah, and of course, Donna. Fez. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you'd be in more into Jackie. Mm. She, she was just, oh, I shouldn't do that on Carmen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was created by Bonnie Turner and Terry Turner. 
Um, they started this show because of all the memories they had when they were young. Right. And, you know, living with their friends in uh, Wisconsin and doing things like without having internet. Uh, they had they had basic TV, you know. So all you had to do is hang out outside with your friends and yeah, get stoned, basically, is what they did in the show. <laughs> you know, basically. it's actually... It was uh, in Fox. Uh, yeah, it was premiered by Fox. And a funny fact, uh, when I actually mentioned the thing about, I mean, if you like Mila Kunis or not, Mila Kunis started this show at the age of 14. What? Yes. So by the first season, she was 15 years old, and she lied to the creators of the show and said that she was 18. Jesus Christ. Just, just so she can get the role, because she knew that there were restrictions to... Uh, uh, a minor uh, labor. Jeez. Yeah. That so. lying bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real. It's cool. You know, you got to do what you got to do for that hustle. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that was her, uh, in the show, it was her first kiss. First time, like, you know, making out with a man. Wait, wait. So did they actually make out with her thinking that she was 18? Yes. Like, um, that lying <laughs> Her first kiss was an Ashton Crusher. Well, now they're married, so but it's uh, cool. It's cool. I respect Ashton. He's doing a lot, a lot of things. I believe it was in the around the second season where she finally was like, "Oh, okay, I'm 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 16 okay. now or whatever she was at the second season." So yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I actually remember that seventy show a lot. I really grew up with it. I watched every single episode twice now. I uh, know. I, I have. I'm not like that. I've watched. <laughs> I've watched. You know, uh, a handful of episodes, and I remember uh, certain things here and there. But I was never really like, oh, boom, right there into that yeah. seventy show. I feel like everyone has seen it. Like you pass by Fox on like, on your TV, and yeah. you'll just you'll see an episode, and, and you'll the, be like, oh, okay. They'll still do reruns and stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, show. I really loved it though. Mm-hmm. That was a good show. Yeah, it was a cool show to watch. It's not like something you. Start watching, you'd be like, ugh, and change it. You'd actually stay and watch the show because it's it's cool to watch. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that's... You know, every episode of that show was named after uh, a song. Oh, really? Oh, usually in a 70s rock song like that. The original title of the show is actually supposed to be Teenage Wasteland, which is a song from The Who. That's, okay. Not that yeah, 70s but show. <laughs> sounds horrible for the name of the show. I know, show. Teenage Wasteland. Teenage Wasteland. But it was, a, it was a very famous song, and that's <laughs> Apocalyptic why. Apocalyptic death. Uh, one other fact I have, which I found to be the funniest fact, is, do you remember the pop circle? Yeah. Where they, the, you, the camera would mm-hmm. go around and be in the middle, and it would go around the room and film every single individual. Yeah. So the smoke that they had that was around there was just strawberry-scented smoke. It wasn't. They weren't really getting high in the show, but it was Donna Hyde and Kelso, the actors. After they would have to retake the scene, they all had cigarettes under the table. They would smoke and then put the cigarettes back, and they would just keep the smoke going on. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's the most I got on that. Uh, that seventy show was great. Yeah, that was an interesting fact though. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that takes us to our next show. And that's going to be, got it right here on the shirt. Uh, I'll be there for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, you know, one of the most famous shows that ever came out of the 90s is Friends, hands down. Mm-hmm. One of the most famous sitcoms that came out of the 90s and inspired so many more sitcoms like that 70s show and How I Met Your Mother and, you know, the list continues yep. and all came from friends the most wonder bread of sitcoms out there <laughs> <laughs> yes actually if you watch that show there's a, I, there's a lot of stuff where it I, didn't age well i know it did <laughs> the, not. a lot of the jokes now are you're like wait what <laughs> yes, i know um, um but it is one of my favorite shows of all time and i i remember uh my parents had them on dvd mm. and they started collecting the box sets and i saw a little bit of episodes but it's when i got older and they got put on netflix where right I watched the entire season and that's a that's a cool thing too it's a lot of these shows you go back and you rewatch, and you sort of you know have a better context of mm-hmm. things going on you understand you like, understand the jokes more yeah and things like that that part is true even though the jokes were kind of bland no offense so this show came out in 1994 um, it was created by David Crane and uh, Martha Cuff- Cuffman. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, the, actually, the title of Friends, because as you could tell, it's such a basic title. Mm. It had... Just like the show. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the first name was In- Insomnia Cafe. That was the name for the show. Okay. They changed it to Friends Like Us, which it doesn't sound that bad. And then they changed it to Across the Hall because the, they lived next to each other, which was Joey and Chandler and uh, Monica and Rachel. Rachel. So there was got to go across the hall. And then the last name was Six of One. Didn't make any sense. No, so Most of them didn't. I know, exactly. So right at the end, like if, as soon as uh, they were planning to premiere the show, they were like, yo, let's go Friends. And that's it. They were like, because they didn't know what name to think of, so they just said Friends. Let's call it Friends. And that's it. It stuck. Hmm. Um, uh, another fun fact, because I know if any, of, if any of you have seen this show or even remember this show, the main couple was always Ross and Rachel. Yeah. So it didn't start out that way. The creators actually wanted it to be Joey and Monica. Uh, I think I, I think I uh, saw that somewhere. You did? Yeah. Yeah. They wanted it actually to be more focused on the relationship between Monica and Joey because in the beginning Joey didn't start out as a dumb character mm. it's, it gradually builded to him being more dumb you, you can't say dumb in 2020 no oh, I'm sorry it's offensive okay <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so that's the most I got out of Friends um, I know a lot of you guys watched it out there so we'll mm-hmm. move on to the next show when a boy means world. world and then yeah. I just spilled the title right there because yeah. that's the only thing it said <laughs> boy meets world <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Boy Meets World came out in 1993. That was the year I was born. Now you guys know my age. So old ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so it was created by uh, Michael Jacob, Michael Jacobs, and April Kelly. Um, they came up with the idea, uh, basically the same way the creators of that '70s show came up with the idea. Um, growing up with your friends when you were younger, and this is different because those all they started all the way in middle school from when he was a little kid, right? And as the show progressed, it reached all the way to college. Actually, mm-hmm. I think even ended up him giving a, getting a job because um, the show went that far. It, yeah, it continued. It got so popular that it continued for that long that um, they were able to go through middle school, high school, college, and eventually. I think they did the same thing with Saved by the Bell. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no they did. Sort of, yeah, they did the same, thing the, the same way, the same, the, sort of the same way. Which is, I was sort of gonna get to. Um, I never really watched Boy Boy Meets World. Mm. Um, I didn't watch it too much because I think I watched more of Saved by the Bell. For me, it was okay. Saved by the Bell. Yeah, know? of course. Which, which I like. I don't know. I watched way more. Uh, I found it more interesting. Um, it actually had a decent intro. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's fair. It's, it's fair. all right. We won't talk. We won't get into that right <laughs> we'll now. We'll wait until the '80s one for that one. The '80s video, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Boy Meets World hands down has to be my favorite '90s show. I remember coming home from school and on ABC, and just watching episodes and episodes. And it wasn't until recently where they put it on Hulu that I I watched the entire series. Mm. And it's very hard to watch twice because it's it's so long, right? And they go through so much. Well, people can watch One Piece. Okay, well, I guess that's fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a story of Corey Matthews. He grows uh, growing up, essentially. His friends, his family, um, with his brother. And his best friend, Sean. I don't know if you remember Sean. Uh, but funny enough, the show was actually supposed to be about three boys. It was supposed to be Corey, Sean, and someone else. So in the first, se- in the first season, if any of you get to the first season, you'll see when they reach the cafeteria scene... It's Corey Shot and another kid. Mm. And then for some reason, like every third episode of the first season, the kid would disappear and they'd change it with another kid because they, they couldn't get the character to stick. Mm. So they had to just, at the end of it, they were like, okay, we got Topanga. That's Topanga. The, that's the love Topanga. interest. Topanga. So they just ignored the third friend and they just only shot the court. That's the most memorable thing to me from Boy Meets World Topanga. Oh, God, she was so beautiful. Like, no lie. Topanga was a childhood crush of mine. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough about Topanga, because I know a lot of you out there watch the show and you're like, what kind of name is Topanga? Topanga? Isn't that an actual place? So the, actually, yeah, uh, the, the creator of the show, one of them was driving around California mm-hmm. and there's a, uh, there's a canyon called Topanga. Okay. So he passed by it and he saw the name and he immediately called the rest of the company and said, okay, we're going to put the name Topanga. And then later in the interview, he said if he would have passed that canyon and gone somewhere else, he would have just picked another name from a from, oh, from wow. a landmark or a street because they just couldn't come up with a name for her. I don't know. I, I hear Topanga and I, I get reminded of 
Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. It's hot in to- Topeka. Topeka. <laughs> and you're like, what the heck is a Topeka? <laughs> the heck is a Topeka? <laughs> the same. That's uh, the same name, but that is funny, though. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, a love story of Topanga and Corey was brought out throughout, the, I think, the second season all the way to the end. Their story was unforgettable. If, you watch, if you're a fan of the show, it's very unforgettable, their story. Yeah. One of the most famous episodes ever was When Corey Cheated. Mm-hmm. With this girl from the uh, slopes, and it was actually played by the uh, actress Linda Carlini, who played Velma in Scooby Doo. Oh, that's interesting. And it actually gained her fame, like it actually like catapulted her to star in Freaks and Geeks, and then in, okay. in future and movies. Then, okay, yeah, interesting. Uh, interesting. And, uh, yeah. There's a see. There's a lot of things in '90s, uh, in the '90s uh, realm of shows where a lot of actors well, pop out. Yeah, yeah, and it's super interesting. That's actually we'll, true. We'll, yeah, we'll get more into that uh, probably in our next video because there's a lot of fun facts that meld with each other. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's why I got a Boy Meets World favorite show. Right. So now my favorite show of the '90s. Oh, hands down. Dun, 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 dun. You might have seen that in our intro because you know what we're talking about. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Man, oh man, what a show. One of the most popular shows. What a show. Okay, so uh, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air started in September 10th of 1990 and it went all the way to May 20th of 1996. So six years in the running, right? Uh, It did start out on NBC. Mm. Um, The creators were Andy and Susan Borrow. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Borowitz. Borowitz, Borowitz, Bor- something like that. <laughs> it follows the story of a fictionalized version of Will Smith, who uh, gets into, you know, he's a teenager yeah. from Philly, he gets into a fight in his hometown, and his aunt, and his mother sends, sends him with his uncle and his aunt um, to, to their Bel Air mansion. Yeah, which, um, all of you know, Will Smith started as the Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff yep. yeah, that back was, in the 80s. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he, uh, moves in with his uh, rich uncle and aunt mm-hmm. and, um, his lifestyle or his, the way he, you know, of course, coming clashes, from, yeah. not uh, coming from money. So, right. Um, wow. So, uh, characters, right. Uh, you had Will Smith playing Will Smith. Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had James Avery. As of course. Uncle, uncle Phil. Phil. First things first. Rest in peace. Uncle Phil. <laughs> yeah. For real. Um, you had uh, Alfonso Ribeiro oh, as course. Carlton. Carlton. It's right. not unusual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you had Janet Hubert Witten and then Daphne Maxwell Reed, who played both played the part yes. of Vivian. There was a there was like a whole thing that went on. Yeah. There. So mm-hmm. it was um it was six seasons and it, I, I remember that because uh, Janet played three seasons as Aunt Viv mm-hmm. and then Daphne did the other three. Um, you had Karen Parsons as Hillary. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had Tatiana M. Ali, which was uh, Ashley. And Ooh, then you have Joseph. Crush. <laughs> you had Joseph Marcel, who was uh, Jeffrey. Oh, Jeffrey! Yeah, God, when he would make fun of Uncle Phil all the time, it was hilarious. Yeah, his his lines were just <laughs> on fire, dude. Um, but yeah, that show for me, dude. I, I remember watching it uh, so much as a kid, and then as I got older, I rewatched it when it was on Netflix. Mm. Netflix, bring it back. Um, I was gonna say because it's not on Netflix anymore. No, it's not. Uh, and I rewatched the whole thing on Netflix, and mm. it's it's one heck of a show. It's a great show. It's a great show. You have in, insane uh, amounts of comedy, mm. um, you know, between all the characters because they all deliver on such a great level. Um, yeah, and all of them the, are, uh, I believe, Broadway actors. Will Smith was the only one who came in. And he wasn't even an actor. Yeah, he's just there. and. Um, then you had yeah he had no acting experience oh. mm. and he I think he mentioned that when he rewatches the first uh, it's season, cringy it's cringy mm. yeah but um and then you had those moments that were really uh, heartfelt oh the most famous scene oh with his Fresh dad Prince of Bel Air of all time you had that one where it's just with the dad but what about the scene where he has with Carlton the gun the gun mm. oh bro yeah you know actually in that scene my hair stands up of when he was with his dad and, and uh, James Avery they did the first take and he messed it up and James Avery pulled him to the side and he was like I want in the entire scene I want you to focus your energy on me and he was able to get through the scene and at the end when they hugged and he was crying James Avery whispers in his ear like that's damn good acting is what he whispers in his ear oh wow yeah 
Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil. Um, yeah, so a few fun facts. So did you know that Will uh, was actually, well, he was in serious debt when yeah. he first came into I did know that, actually. Fresh Prince. Yeah. He was almost $3 million in debt mm-hmm. with the IRS. Because he you spent a lot of money, that, I know. You know, the IRS be coming for their money. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, he came into that, pretty much he agreed to do, doing that show because of the situation, right? Mm-hmm. You make that bread, bro. Um, did you know that Tyra Banks made her acting debut on the show? Really? Yeah. Because she was a model first, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Did you know, or do you know, what Jeffrey's last name was on the show? I don't. Because I'm going to say Jeffrey Butler, but I ain't right. You are right. <laughs> It's Jeffrey Butler. <laughs> um, so, okay. And uh, did you know what shoes were inspired by the Fresh Prince Bel-Air? The Jordan Grey Fives. Okay. And? Uh, and the uh, Bel-Airs. Okay. They were released later. Well, I mean, the Jordan the Jordan Grey Fives were not inspired by that. He just popularized them. Right. That's what it was. Because he wore them without shoelaces and no one ever did that. Because mm. apparently they had an elastic that held onto your feet. Mm. So he popularized the Jordan 5 by wearing them without shoelaces. Especially the grapes. Right. Um, yeah. Basically that, that, that was it. <laughs> yeah. A really popular show. I mean he inspired a lot. That show inspired so many things. Oh yeah. For really. sure. I know that a lot of people really enjoyed that show and it's very very popular. 100%. Well, uh, yeah, that is the uh, the end of you know the shows that we have for today. Yes. Um, you know, we hope that you, our viewers, enjoyed what we were talking about today. Like, subscribe, comment. You uh, know, um, try to help us to help us a little bit here. We'll continue bringing content for you guys. Catapult us into stardom. Yeah. <laughs> um, but and, seriously, though, we do like having fun doing these videos. It's, you know, we, we we do actually enjoy these. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and for sure, we'll be making another video talking about the shows that we didn't get to mm. talk about today. So, uh, make sure to stay tuned for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this ride and hopefully you'll join us on the next ride here in the, the passenger, passenger seat. seat. I'm gonna stop poking. Well, I mean, start poking at the show. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's it's okay. But it's, it's it's white people getting coffee, so it's pre- it's pretty basic. <laughs> that we're not putting in the episode. <laughs> we're probably cutting that one in the bloopers. Well, um, people can watch One Piece. Okay. Well, I guess that's fair. If you can watch One Piece, you can watch Boy Meets World. <laughs> if you if you're brain dead enough to watch One Piece, <laughs> no offense. Like 800 episodes, just you know. Yeah, I think they're getting up there actually. Uh, it's recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just have you, you know that. <laughs> that was kind of funny though. <laughs>